dimensions f that take n-dimensional vectors and map them to real numbers. In this video, we'll generalize, generalize the concept to gradients of vector-valued functions, so functions f that take vectors in Rn and map them to Rm. Suppose x is an n-dimensional vector. A vector-valued function is a function f that takes n-dimensional vectors and maps them to Rm. It's given by f of x equals the column f1 of x, f2 of x, all the way down to fm of x. Again, that's a real vector, real column vector with m rows. Writing a vector valued function in this way allows us to view f from rn to rm as a vector of functions, where each component is a function that maps something from rn to r. And therefore, the differentiation rules for each component will remain the same. So the partial derivative of f with respect to any variable xi is going to be a column vector, df1 dxi, df2 dxi, so on, dfm dxi. In the previous video, we saw that the gradient of f with respect to various variables was a row vector. Here, given any, uh, given any one variable, the derivative with respect to the function in that variable is going to be a column vector. So when we put these together and we want to differentiate a function with respect to each variable, we end up with a matrix of first derivatives that we call the Jacobian. The collection of all first order partial derivatives of vector value functions f from Rn to Rn is called the Jacobian. J, or the gradient of f, or df of x dx, is going to be the row vector of derivatives, df of x dx1, df of x dx2, all the way to df of x dxn. Now, of course, df of x dx1 is itself a column vector. It's df1 of x dx1, df2 of x dx1, all the way down to df m of x dx1. And that's the same for every entry in our gradient. So each one of those entries in our row vector is actually itself a column vector as well. And so we end up with a, a matrix. Let's take a look at an example. We'll consider a function f of x, which is equal to ax. A is a matrix, A is going to be 3 by 2, x is going to be in R2, which makes f of x in R3. So f of x, therefore, is going to take things from R2 and map them to R3, which means that our derivative of f with respect to x has to be a 3 by 2 matrix. Now fi of x is simply going to be the entry where we've uh, completed the matrix multiplication. So it's the sum where j goes from 1 to n of aijxj. And so if you look at that sum and you differentiate with respect to xj, dfi dxj is going to be the ijth entry Therefore, df dx is going to be the matrix df1 dx1, df1 dx2, df2 dx1, df2 dx2, df3 dx1, df3 dx2. Or since dfi dxj is equal to aij, it's really a11, a12, a21, a22, a31, a32. And so, in fact, it's equal to A, our 3 by 2 uh, original matrix.
And this might seem like a bit of an esoteric example, but this would be a really good example for you to actually take a look at uh, using x equals x1, x2, and constructing a three by two matrix A, and probably best to use unique, uh, unique, unique entries so that you can actually see how all of this comes together. Start by coming up with an A, and then constructing AX, and take a look at how that looks, and then differentiate that with respect to each X, and take a look at how that looks. Final example here. We're going to consider H of T, which is F of G of T, where F of X is equal to E to the X1, X2 squared. X is a matrix of the vector X1, X2, which we could call G of T. And it's given by T cos T, T sine T. So to compute the gradient of H with respect to T, we apply the chain rule. DH dt is equal to df dx dx dt. And so here we end up with uh, the row matrix df dx1 df dx2 times the column vector uh, dx1 dt dx2 dt. So plugging in df dx1, we know df dx1, it's just going to be x2 squared e to the x1 x2 squared. And we know df dx2, that's simply going to be 2x1 x2 e to the x1 x2 squared. We know dx1 dt, that's going to be cosine t minus t sine t by the product rule. And uh, dx2 dt is going to be sine t plus t cosine t. So multiplying those out, we get e to the x1, x2 squared times x2 squared cosine t minus t sine t plus 2x1, x2 sine t plus t cos t. And again, we want to swap out our x1 for t cosine t and x2 for t sine t to finish off the problem. In our next video, we'll continue this uh, idea of finding gradients, but we'll find gradients next for matrices.